Hi, first grade. We're going to read a new book today. It is a biography. It's called The Boy Who Loved Math, The Improbable Life of Paul Erdos. This is going to be part one. We're going to have two parts to our book. Um, it's a biography. And remember, our biography is a true story about a person's life. We're going to read about Paul Eros, who is a famous mathematician, just like Fibonacci. However, uh, Paul Eros lived many years after Fridge after Fibonacci, he lived in a country called Hungary, which is not far away from Leonardo, where Leonardo lived. Today, we're going to learn about Paul Eros's life and why he is an important mathematician. So we're going to continue to make connections. Say connection. Good job. Uh, what is a connection? A connection is when you think about something you already know to help you understand what's happening in the text. There's three types of connections, and we're going to talk about that on the next slide. So we're making connections to nonfiction text. What is a connection? A connection is when you think about something that you already know to help you understand what's happening in the text. We can make text to self, text to world, and text to text connections. How do you do it? Text to self asks, has anything ever in the text ever happened to me? Text to world asks, what do I know in the world that is can help me understand what's happening in the text? Text to text asks, has anything ever happened in another text I've read? Why do we do it? Good readers make connections to help them understand information in the Okay, so we're going to get started. Here is our first page. There once was a boy who loved math. He grew up to be one of the greatest mathematicians who ever lived. It all started with a big problem. Paul Eros lived in Budapest, Hungary with his mama. Mama loved Paul to infinity. Paul loved mama to infinity too. At the top of the page, I gave you the symbol for infinity. It's in the book, but it's hard to see because they use that actually in, in the text. That is infinity, which means it goes on forever. When he was three, mama had to go back to work as a math teacher. He didn't want anything bad to happen to Paul. So she left him with one person she knew would take very good care of him. She left him with Froilein. Froilein had too many rules. There was problem. That was a problem because Paul hated rules. He hated to be told to sit still, when to eat, when to sleep. What could Paul do? He couldn't exactly solve the problem, but Paul knew that when summer came, Mama would be home with him 100% of the time. So he taught himself to count really high. And then he figured out how many days it would be until summer vacation. It made him feel much better to know the number. So Paul kept counting and thinking about numbers. One day when he was four, Paul asked a visitor when her birthday was. She told him, where year were you born? He asked, she told him, what time? She told him, Paul thought for a moment. And then he told her how many seconds she had been alive. And it's that really big number right there that I don't even know what it is. Paul liked this trick. He did it often. So I'm thinking aloud to myself. I'm thinking Paul sounds like he was really good at math and he loved numbers. In the text side, he was only four years old and he was able to calculate how many seconds a person had been, live, been alive by asking them when they were born and the time that they were born. That's an incredibly difficult math problem, especially for a four-year-old. I can make a text to connect connection by saying, has anything in this text ever happened in another text that I've read? Hmm, what did I read last week? Oh, I remember Leonardo Fibonacci loved numbers when he was young. Leonardo would count things to solve math problems faster than all the other students. This made Leonardo feel proud of himself because he was solving problems and he worked quickly in his head. Paul was very similar. Paul must feel, this connection shows me that the Fibonacci character and this Paul character, they're having a connection. They probably feel the same. 
Paul probably feels proud of himself like Leonardo did. I bet Paul got a lot of joy working with numbers and numbers must have been very important to Leonardo. So we are making a connection as a good reader. Tax to tax, it means book to book. We're connecting something we heard in another book. It's helping us understand about our new character, Paul. Let's keep reading. So eventually, Mama sent him to school. Of course, when it was time, but Paul and school were not a good match. Paul could not sit for too long, so he got up and he ran around the classroom. But that was against the rules. Oh, Paul, Paul hated rules. How could he solve this problem? Hmm. Can you make a text to text connection to help you understand Paul's problem? In the text, it says Paul hates school and that he always got out of his seat. Huh. Back when we were in school, I know it was hard to sit for so long. I can make a text to text connection to this. I remember we read Blockhead. He was also bored in school. I remember he was looking out the window and he counted birds and he thought about numbers and he was having trouble because it was too easy for him. This made Leonardo bored and then he got in trouble for daydreaming. This connection helps me understand Paul's problem. I think Paul is bored with school because it's probably too easy. Like it was for Leonardo. Paul wants to do more math, but instead, he is forced to sit still. That is interesting. Keep going. All right. Paul told Mama he didn't want to go to school anymore, not for one more day or zero days. He wished he could take days away, negative school days. He pleaded with Mama to stay home. Luckily, Mama was a worrier. She worried about germs a lot. She worried that Paul could catch dangerous germs in school. So she helped him solve his problem. She said he could stay with, who could he stay with? Fräulein. But even Fräulein was better at school. Even Fräulein was better than school. Maybe 500 times better. Fräulein and Mama did everything for Paul. They cut his meat, even buttered his bread, got him dressed, and tied his shoes. That was great. It meant Paul could think about numbers all day. Numbers were his best friends. He could always depend on numbers to be there and behave in the same way. Number followed, he followed rules. He didn't like rules in life, but he liked the rules and numbers. So Paul turned seven, and then he turned eight, and then he turned nine, and then when he turned 10, he fell in love with prime numbers. Prime numbers are special. They can't be divided evenly. A prime number can be only divided by one in itself. The first prime number is two, but that is the only even prime number. The other prime numbers are odd. The numbers are three, five, and seven. Not all numbers, not all odd numbers are prime. Nine isn't prime because you can't multiply three by three and get nine. Wow, look at that. Paul had a lot of questions about prime numbers. Did they go on forever? Is there a pattern to them? What is the high way? Is it that the higher they go up, the farther apart the prime numbers are? Paul loved to think all about prime numbers. When Paul got older, he wanted to go to high school. He liked school one million times better now. He made friends, people his age, who loved math and were really good at it too. Paul and his friends did math together all over Budapest, but Paul was the best. He loved being the top of math, at the top of towers and mountains and buildings too. He thought about math whatever he was doing, wherever he went. By the time Paul was 20, he was already famous around the world for his math. People called him the mathematician of Budapest. But he still did not know how to do his laundry or cook his food or butter his bread. That was not a problem. He still lived at home and Mama did everything for him. But then one day, 
we are actually going to stop here. I do want to talk a little bit about the book. It's a long book, so we'll finish it tomorrow. I'm noticing, I'm going to think aloud again. As I was reading, I was kind of noticing that Paul is very unique. He does not want to do anything besides math all day. He doesn't even want to do the basic things like do laundry, make his food, because he'd rather be spending time on math. In the text, it says Paul realized he was different and he was okay. So we're going to find out a little bit about uh, that tomorrow. And let's see here. You know, I was thinking too, if I ever, if connecting text to text, I know we read a bad case of stripes more than once this year. And those characters are not being themselves. I know that Camilla in A Bad Case of Stripes was unique. Remember, she got stripes all over her face. He was trying to teach us that it's important to be true to yourself. So I think Paul, in his life, he's living his life the way Camilla learned to live her life, by being true to herself or himself. Now, I understand the way Paul is living is a great lesson to us all. So we are going to talk more about that tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed the story. I love being able to talk to you on the screen as well. I will see you tomorrow for part two.